Sophia, and this week we are yet again covering the important topic of anchoring. Last episode we covered the considerations you must make in order to have a safe anchorage, and this week we are doing a how-to. The basic principles of anchoring are the same, but depending on the type of boat you have, they may change accordingly. For example, a monohull versus a catamaran. A catamaran will require twice the amount of scope of a monohull so that the anchor does not pull out with wave action. I'm going to talk to you about how we, as a couple, anchor wave dancer. As part of our passage planning, we know where we want to anchor, but we also have alternatives available to us because the Irish weather may not decide to play ball and do what is forecast. So we like to be prepared. We set our scope for the height of water at high tide because we want to make sure that we have sufficient scope to cover the tidal range between high and low water. We also make sure that we have sufficient clearance under our keel so that we stay afloat on anchor. When we arrive at any anchorage, even our favourite ones, we always do a reconnaissance run to check out where is the ideal spot to drop our anchor. We double check our depth because an area may have silted up since we were there last. And we also check our wind and current direction to make sure that we are going to be comfortable in the anchorage. Another consideration we must make is what time of year it is. Different times of year may require that you anchor in a slightly different spot. For example, in Saltpan Bay during bird breeding season, we cannot tuck in as close to shore as we would normally do, so we will anchor further out. If you look at our chart plotter, you will notice that there are a number of circles. This is where we have done a 360 rotation in order to slow down our momentum during our reconnaissance run. Once John has picked where he wants to drop anchor, he lets me know and he goes down to turn on the flag switch for the electric winch and then goes to the bow armed with his trusty pliers and glove so that he can release the locking mechanism on the bow roller which holds the anchor in place so that it cannot accidentally deploy. This locking mechanism consists of an L-shaped heavy duty stainless steel bar which passes through the bow roller and anchor and is locked off with a heavy duty oar clip. We do not like to raise our voice when we are on board and we do not possess a uh, marriage saver headsets which you see other couples using so we use hand signals when we are anchoring. When we started out anchoring and our boys were with us we used to position one of the lads usually William at midships and he would relay messages from the bow to the helm. When John has released the locking mechanism and is ready to deploy the anchor he will give me a thumbs up so I know that my job on the helm is about to begin. He will release the anchor and chain by hand until it reaches the water surface in order to prevent any loud splashing or accidental clanking of the anchor off our bow. After that he will use the foot controls for further deployment but John will give me the up down signal to let me know anchor is away and it's on the way to the seabed. Once the anchor is on the seabed, John will use hand signals to indicate which direction he wants the head of the tiller to point when we are in reverse as we pay out the chain. When we reach the desired scope for that particular anchorage, John will give me a thumbs up and I will put Wave Dancer into a slow reverse to help dig in the anchor. I bring up the rev slowly to about half throttle. Then we put her into neutral and we check, are we holding our transits? I personally like to have my own set of transits from the helm so that I know where you're holding even before John gives me the thumbs up. We then do a short burst of hard reverse, about 2000 revs to really bite in the anchor. We will double check the transits again as we sit in neutral. If we are set, John will give me a thumbs up. I will go below, turn off the flag switch, turn off the electrics and then the engine goes off. Then I lash the tiller midships whilst John sets up the snubber 
and the anchor ball goes up. It is imperative that you show the appropriate day shapes or night lights according to collision regulations because they are legal requirements and if there was an accident and you did not have the appropriate signage up, your insurance company would not cover you. We also, at night time, will put up a lower light in the cockpit, a white all-round light, so that we are visible because a masthead light way off up the top of our mast, great, you can see it from a distance, but if you're coming through an anchorage area, a busy anchorage late at night, you might not see the masthead light aloft, whereas if you have a light down in your cockpit area or lower down, you will be visible. We are not under the starter's gun to race ashore in our dinghy soggy bottom. We prefer to sit on anchor for a while and ensure that we're holding fast before we go ashore. This also gives us a chance to have a post-passage cup of tea and change into our shore going clothes. Even though we have an anchor watch alarm set, we prefer to visually double check our holding and transits at night time, especially in areas where the seabed may not be ideal. Life on anchor is brilliant. We really enjoy the quiet life and being close to nature and watching the world go by. A mug of tea and a book and I'm in heaven. When it comes to weighing anchor, we have our routines as well. Engine on, electrics on. I unlash the tiller and because I'm short, I need a tiller extension so I can see past the um, spray hood and still have control of the tiller. John turns on the flag switch before going forward and he removes the snubber and anchor ball and he has pliers and the oar clip in his pocket to lock the L bar into position once the anchor is in the bow roller. When John is ready to weigh anchor, he gives me a thumbs up so I know to slowly move forward at low tick over mode. His hand signals tells me which direction to go as he can see where the chain has been. We never ever use the windlass to pull the boat to the anchor. This will destroy your windlass, hence the slow motor forward. John counts the coloured links on our chain so he knows how much is left to come up. As we get close to the anchor, John will signal for me to go into neutral and drift forward so we do not drive over the anchor and damage it. He gives me the up-down signal when we are over the anchor and we start to raise it. Once he can see the anchor coming close to the surface, he will signal that I can proceed out of the anchorage slowly as he finishes bringing up the anchor and stows it and locks it in place. He will then bring back the equipment from the bow of the boat and turn off the flag switch of the windlass. We are now ready to depart on our next adventure and we can safely hoist our sails. I hope you enjoyed our techniques of anchoring and maybe picked up a tip or two. Get out there and enjoy life at anchor.